Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And, uh, you know, yesterday we did this video here, All Things Are Possible to Him That Believes Over on the Noon Institute of Biblical Research. Uh, what an amazing outpouring of uh, people that were blessed as a result. And uh, it's kind of inspired me to want to do another video now. But uh, in the meantime, I'm sitting here writing thank you letters to people that support the ministry. And as I was doing that, I was talking about this video. And I got another incredible revelation on... Uh, this very uh, this very message from uh, is actually from the book of Mark, uh, but the revelation came because I was also looking at Matthew 17, uh, which is the parallel of Mark 9. If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Of course, Matthew brings out uh, the part about the mustard seed, and uh, you know, if you shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. In fact, I was writing that in one of the letters here, and as I did that, uh, as I wrote about that in there, then I caught this amazing revelation. And not only did I catch the amazing revelation, uh, and I was, I even said it in the letter. Uh, I forget exactly how I put it, um, but I went back and as I began to review Matthew 17, I realized that what is said here has a lot to do with the, even the two witnesses because they were coming down from Mount Transfiguration or what we call Mount Transfiguration where Jesus met Moses and Elijah. And and then it brought something else to my memory. I'm thinking about the Dead Sea Scrolls and how that the Qumran community uh, actually interpreted certain verbiages uh, that were in Hebrew, how they would uh, look at this and say it applies this way or that way. So I decided to do that video first. Uh, and then I'm going to do a video on testimonies about prayer and, and really holding fast for those loved ones that you have, uh, believing that, that the Lord Jesus will save those, those people that are lost. Uh, I've seen some incredible things. I'm talking about very miraculous that have happened. And so I'm going to share that in another video, put that one on Danoon Institute. But this here is, a, is on Israeli News Live. And I know there's a lot of friends here on Israeli News Live. You come here only for the news. I appreciate that. I'll keep you guys updated as well. But uh, just so you know, if you watch here mainly only for the news, understand Israeli News Live started off as Danoon Institute. Uh, it was probably the first couple of hundred thousand subscribers were here because of biblical teaching, not even because of news. We didn't even do news in the early days. Uh, and then we slowly but surely started getting more into the news because we were looking at more of the prophetic aspects of what's happening in the world. Uh, then we evolved just into news only and then occasionally teachings, things like that. And so it's kind of a little mixed crowd here. That's one reason why we still share videos like this with you. So let's get right into this. As I said, we did this video over here on Danoon Institute. All things are possible to him that believes. And I shared just some amazing testimonies that I have experienced and seen in my own life. So hundreds and hundreds more I could share. I just don't like to major on uh, the supernatural. I want people to have more faith in the word of God. And so, so they don't, don't lean to miracles because you could have miracles, all kinds of signs and everything else and still be false. Um, so, you know, uh, that kind of makes me think of another thing I mentioned in this letter here because you got these people saying that me and my wife are not married. That is hysterical. Uh, it's okay, though. We, we're going to post our marriage license eventually here uh, so that maybe, just maybe, and I think the only reason I might even consider doing that is so that uh, people will realize when you continually spread lies about someone, you need to come to that place that you're anointed of an evil spirit. And uh, there are some people out there that are definitely spreading lies. And uh, that's a demonic spirit. You know, I, I have no problem when someone disagrees with me on a doctrinal issue. Uh, 
and, and, and in some cases, it's doctrinal issues that I had at one time and I no longer have. Uh, you know, they might go back and say something about that. Okay, well, if I've corrected those issues, and you know, let's look at the corrections, not just keep dwelling on the past. But, uh, but to continue to spread lies, that's a demonic spirit. And I wouldn't follow a demonic spirit. And they bewitch a lot of people as a result of that. Uh, so I'm, I'm very disturbed by that. And I just pray that God will do something for them that will open their eyes to recognize that. Because when you have a spirit like that on you, you want to repent and get that spirit off of you. You don't want that type of spirit. You know, if, if I knew that I was spreading lies about someone and then later found out, one, I'd have to go to that person and apologize. Uh, because as Jesus said, don't, don't go and bring your gift until you've made right what you've done wrong. And then come forth and bring your gift to the altar. So I'd want to go make that right. And then, uh, you know, and then whatever it takes to fix the problem, you know. And then cease, you know, if in this case here, just cease from what you're doing. Because you are spreading lies. Um, and, uh, but, you know, sometimes people get bold and they think they know what they're doing. They think they're right. Only but to find out that they're completely false. Let's get into this, though, guys. This is really amazing. Matthew chapter 17, as I said, is the parallel. And right here, uh, we're going to look first right in this, this part here. Uh, it says, uh, let me go to, I don't want to back up too far. Uh, this is where the young man, he, he can't be uh, healed by the disciples. They had brought him to Jesus' disciples. They couldn't heal him. Um, but you're going to have to, as you read this, so you need to think about this whole chapter, what this is all about. We're, we're reading about uh, Jesus coming off the Mount Transfiguration, Moses and Elijah, the question that is asked, presented to Jesus. Doesn't the scripture say that Elias must first come, or Elijah? Uh, and Jesus says, he shall. He puts him in the future. He shall first come and restore all things. But and then he goes and backs up and he says, but I said, you've already come. And they did to him what was listed because the spirit of Elijah has, it comes down over and over and over. Right. So then, then he gets into this issue here and it almost seems like he's diverting, going into another subject. But then I realized he's not, he's taking a situation and expounding on what he had already told them. I brought it to him the, to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. The man says about Jesus. This is the boy that was, his son is a lunatic and sore vexed, for oftentimes he falls into the fire, as we know, and often into the water. Then Jesus answered him and said, O faithful, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you, and, 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 and how long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. Now, in the Hebrew Matthew, in verse 17, it's very important to note this right here. Uh, and by the way, in the Hebrew Matthew, they they fill they put a filler in there using the the, the Gospel of Mark. They should have just used or used the Gospel of Matthew. I don't know why they use the Gospel of Mark to put the filler in. But um, in the Hebrew Matthew, it goes from that. Uh, what he says there in verse 17, and then it goes right on into, and the disciples drew near to Jesus secretly and said to him, why were we not able to cast him out? doesn't speak about uh, the issue of, um, uh, here, they don't speak about, um, what would you call that? Uh, you know, Jesus casting out the, the, the evil spirit, etc. Just goes from where he says here, Jesus answered and said, evil generation woe to you who deny how long will i be with you how long will i bear your trouble bring him to me now it's i find it interesting the way he ver verbalizes this here okay he calls them an evil generation okay and literally in hebrew you can see it right there dora Okay, an evil generation. Oy lechem et him hakofurim ad had mati ihaye imchem. Right? How long you, this evil generation? Now, what I find interesting too is the way it's done in Hebrew. Hebrew. Um, when he says evil generation, it's not pluralized. It's just dora, evil generation, 
or generation evil is actually backwards. Ra is the word evil, and then uh, Dor is the word for generation. But it doesn't say Dorim, Barim. So he's talking about literally not so much the individuals, but just everything about this whole generation, this time period that he's living in. And that's something that, that, that should be uh, considered as well. A lot of people may not realize that he's literally, when he says evil generation, uh, he's talking about the time period, not the people themselves. Boy, you know, it's funny, just like in yesterday's video, I said, I got to pause for a moment for the dog. So let me deal with that again real quick. We'll come right back. Keep right on going. So that's, that's the advantage of the Hebrew language that we're able to see. Uh, in this case of Dora, that I can see that it's not the people. It's the, it's the time period in which they live in. It is so evil. Woe to you who deny. See, that's what he says there. And of course, in the Hebrew, in this case here, he's not talking about the generation now. He's just, now he's talking about to them. Oy lechem at them. So that literally, like, oy, like, you know, the Jews say, oy ve, right? Oi, lechem at them, you know, woe unto you. And so he's dealing with them specifically now, but he knows that they're in a very evil, demonic type generation. How long will I be with you? How long will I bear your trouble? Bring him to me. And then we move down. And we see, he says here, when Jesus, excuse me, the disciples drew, right? Like I said, the Hebrew, Gordon's Hebrew Matthew, or uh, Shem Tov's Hebrew Matthew, I should call it. Uh, it's written by, How, what is it, Howard? Oh, gosh, I forget now. Howard, because I got it sitting right here. By the way, any of you that ever want to look at, George Howard, there we go. You could always get this book. You could get it on, uh, probably even on Amazon. Uh I, I think it's an amazing resource tool. But anyway, he goes on and, you know, the like I said, the middle part is left out. He just, then he goes in, in this part, says the disciples drew near to Jesus secretly and said to him, why were we not able to cast, cast it out? Now, notice it's the word cast it out. And that's another thing, uh, you know, uh, and that's just, that's that little vowel at the end, the vav. Cast it out, okay? Uh, we were not able to cast it out. He said to them, because of the limitation of your faith, truly I say to you, if there be in you any faith as a grain of mustard, if you believe, you will say to this mountain, depart, and it will depart. Nothing will be held, withheld from you. But this kind of demon does not go, but excuse me, does not come out except by prayer and fasting. When we normally look at this right here, and this is where I want to pause and share with you, and it's really going to require you to do a little deep thinking. Because we're so taught that he's saying that if your faith is so great, you're going to take, and, and, and I live here in the mountains myself, I'm just going to believe, and that mountain's going to be gone. It's going to move from here to there. Uh, okay? Now, I'm not saying that maybe faith couldn't do that as well, but you have to understand the thinking of the disciples of his day. You know, we know according to, uh, I think it's Pliny, the, the, father, uh, the church father called Pliny, that actually lived during the time of the disciples, he actually wrote about, I think it was two or three of the disciples actually come from the Qumran community where the Dead Sea Scrolls were written. And that's something I'm going to show with you right, share with you right here, because this is from the fragment 11Q13. And I'm going to take the highlighted version I did for you so we can look at this a little closer. Um, because I think this is very, very important. And uh, so we want to look at this in regards to this mountain. 
They say here, Isaiah the prophet who said, and they're quoting from Isaiah 52, 7, how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace. The messenger of good who announces salvation, saying to Zion, your God reigns. Its interpretation, now this is what the Qumran community, and how they interpreted the passage. The mountains are the prophets. Boy, think of that one. For all. There's, a, so there's we got a blank spot in there, so we don't know what everything is said there. And the messenger is the anointed of the spirit of Daniel, as Daniel said about him, until an anointed a prince, it is seven weeks. And the messenger of good who announces salvation is the one about whom it is written, to comfort the afflicted. That ought to bring you a new thought right there too, the comforting of the afflicted, right? Because you know, it is actually written, I think it's in the Gospel of John, that uh, when they go to comfort those that mourn, quoting from the, uh, the, the, the book of Zechariah, which a lot of people believe is a future event going on in Israel. I used to teach that as well. I apologize because it was totally wrong. I totally wasn't paying attention to the scripture saying it was already fulfilled. But even the Qumran community had enough sense to know that the, that the, that the messenger or the prince that shall come that Daniel spoke of, also the, the, uh, the messenger of good that announces salvation, all are one and the same. It is the Messiah. It was Jesus Christ, and he fulfilled every bit of those passages. And yet some of these we still are putting in the future. Now, that's a little sidetrack, but staying on track, the important part is, is the mountains are the prophets. So now, as you look at what Jesus is saying, all right, we'll go back over here to Matthew 17. Now, we were, we were looking uh, here in the Hebrew Matthew. He said unto them, Because of the limitation of your faith, truly I say to you, if there be any in you any faith as a grain of mustard, if you believe you will say to this mountain, Depart, and it will depart, nothing will be withheld from you. But this kind of, watch this, but this kind of demon. All right, verse 21. Vezeh hamin min hashadim. Lo yotze ki im. Oh my gosh. Oh, by the way, that's another thing too. You know, people love to sing this song, El Shaddai. The word Shad right there is in the middle there, right? But a lot of people don't even know that the word Shaddai literally means my demon or my, like a devil. Okay? I'm not here to, to I don't know, maybe I shouldn't even tell you guys this. Anyway, Min hashadim lo yotzeki im betafa the the wow tongue twister here betafala utso so um right so this type but this kind of demon does not come out except by prayer and fasting. Wow, what do you know? That kind of demon only goes out through prayer and fasting. He's likened the situation that he just gave them about praying that if you pray and say to this mountain, depart, it will depart. If we take into consideration the Dead Sea Scrolls, and as I was showing you, the, the one that I've highlighted here, uh, is they're talking about the mountains in Isaiah's prophecy. The Qumran community interpreted the mountains as what? As the prophets. So, in the eyes of the Jewish people of his day, a mountain represented a prophet, not necessarily a physical mountain. Now, what is that then? Perhaps, perhaps, and I don't know, I've not been able to do enough research on this yet to know for sure, perhaps so what they were dealing with when Jesus says this, we'll go to the, Matthew, the book of Matthew right now, where he says this, uh, you shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. They must have had, no doubt, possibly a false prophet in their midst. Maybe that was the problem. 
Howbeit this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. The demon that was in the, the boy had to be cast out by, by prayer and fasting. But the faith that they had could have removed the mountain that was in their way or perhaps, and I said as a conjecture because I can't say for sure, maybe Jesus is talking about a physical mountain. But knowing what the Jews believed of his day, perhaps what's really going on is he's talking about a false prophet. And then as you begin to look, like I said, as you begin to examine the scripture and you go back, what do we have going on to begin with in the whole chapter here? And behold, there appeared unto Moses and Elijah talking with him, right? Where were they? They were on, uh, and you, let's see, let's see if they even mentioned, yeah. All right, and after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart. In this case, they're on a physical mountain, so could, could he uh, have been speaking of a physical mountain? Maybe. He was transfigured before them. His face did shine as the sun. His raiment as white as, as the light. Behold, there appeared to him Moses and Elijah talking with him. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elias. While he had spoke, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. All right, we go on down, verse 7. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise, be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man say, Jesus only. And as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. And his disciples asked him, saying, Why then say the scribes that Elias must first come? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elias has come already, and they knew, knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. What are we looking at here? We're looking at the prophets. We're looking at the prophecies. We're looking at what Jesus said. You know, he's talking about Elijah is going to come. And literally, he puts it in the future. If you look at that in the Hebrew Matthew, for example, as we back up in this same book right here, right? Uh, they wanted to make the tabernacles. Here it is. When the voice, uh, okay, his, his disciples asked him, saying, "Who do the say? Who do the sages? Why do the sages say that Elijah will come first? He answered them and said, "Indeed, Elijah will come and will save all the world." That's verse eleven. Okay, let's see if how that works out in the Hebrew language. Veya'an, which means, and he answered. Lehem, he answered to them, Veyomer, and said, Amenem Eliyah, okay, excuse me, he's saying that he's saying truly Elijah, truly now, truly Elijah, Yaba. That literally means, he doesn't just say Ba, he says Yaba, he will come. Not, not he already had come, he will come. Ve Yeshua Olam and will save all the world. If he goes on, he says, he answered them and said, Indeed, Elijah will come and save all the world. And he said, But I say unto you, he's already come. So he's showing them that a future Elijah is coming, but he's also showing them that he's already come. Now, again, what are we talking about? We're talking about prophets. What did, what did they say in the Dead Sea Scrolls? The prophets are the mount, the mountains are the prophets. He says that saying to you is already come, right? Then the disciples understood that he was regard, speak, regarding John the baptizer. He was saying this, right? And John's already, by the way, John's dead when he puts the coming of Elijah in the future to save the world. And when he came to pass, he approached the crowds. The man came to him bowing on his knees, right? Now the man, he's got the child. The child is sick. He's possessed of a devil. And then he begins to deal with that issue. He talks about how evil the generation is. How long am I going to be troubled with you? Right? And then as he get, you know, they after they couldn't cast, they tried to cast him out. It didn't work. And then he tells them, it's a limitation of your faith. They couldn't understand. Why couldn't they do it? He said, truly, I say to you there, if there be in, in you, if there be in you any, any faith as grain of mustard, if you believe, you will say to this mountain, depart, and it will depart. 
Nothing will be withheld from you. So in my way of seeing this, it's the, the mountain here was there was a false prophet that was hindering their moving forward. And where they were, and he gives them that type, right? He just dealt with the prophets and everything, and Elijah, them coming, and they came off Mount Transfiguration. Now he's dealing with them on such a deep level. Now they come in, the guy, the, the, the boys possessed of the devil. Now they're dealing with an entity, a spirit, an evil spirit that's inside of a child. But if you remember, what did Jesus say, though, right? In verse 17, he said, There. <clears throat> Evil generation. Dora. So it's not just a demon and a boy, but it's also a demonic system that is set up around them. They couldn't get the boy, the, the demon out of the boy, but he said through prayer and fasting would deal with that demon. But the greater demon or the mountain that stood in their way was that false prophet that no doubt was hindering the work, the mighty works of God. But as he said earlier in the chapter, Elijah shall first come and save the world or restore all things, I think is how it does in the Matthew that we have in our Bible. Let me just look and see there. Um, shall first come and, and restore all things is what he says here. Uh, in the Hebrew Matthew, it's save the world, but restore all things. Hmm. I mean, do you see? I mean, this, I mean, this is incredible to me. This is absolutely incredible. Uh, and then you go all the way down, and you get into where they bring in the coin and 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 Caesar and the and, and it's like an economic play that's going to happen. I mean, I, I could really go on and on and on and on with this. I just haven't had time. I don't want to go into that too much. I was looking at that too, the coin in the fish's mouth and given Caesar's was Caesar's, things like that. Oh my gosh, friends. I mean, he, he literally, the whole chapter is telling you an amazing thing. So amazing beyond words. And you know, I know now why we're under such a demonic attack in my family and and why someone would want to try to, to kill everyone in this family. Even the work that my wife does, amazing, amazing work that she does. You know, um, and then these insights that God lays on my heart, you know, it's just Satan doesn't want that out. And then you get these little detractors that go out there and, and spread all their little lies and stuff like that. You know, that's Satan. Satan trying to stop the word of God going forth. Mm. listen thank you for listening i trust it is a blessing to you and look listen my mailing address there is up there at the top of the screen as always there our 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 website israelinewslive.org uh you can always donate online right now we've been having a little bit of trouble getting videos to load up on iConnect, which always pop up here on our website as well uh, I'll get with the, the, the friends over there to find out how we can get that resolved. Maybe it's my computer. I don't know yet. We'll figure that out. Um, but uh, we want to thank you for, for being here, being a part of the work that we do. And thank you for your support of this ministry as well. Like I said, you can donate online or by mail, either one. And uh, hopefully some of you will start getting letters. Uh, uh, and uh, so, because I've been busy doing that uh, today, and I'll try to continue throughout the weekend to, to send out more letters as well. God bless you. We love you. We need your prayers desperately bad. We really, really, really need prayers. Uh, and a good friend of mine that uh, is going through the heart surgery there, he desperately needs your prayer as well. Uh, he's not been doing very well. Uh, he's not, it's, he didn't come out of this so quickly. And I was kind of worried for him when he went in. and But I'm believing that God is going to do a miraculous thing for him, one way or the other. So thank you and God bless you. Uh, EMP Shield as well. You might seriously want to consider that. Uh, I just bring it up. I don't say it very often about EMP Shield. But there's so much going on with these threats of war and you know, so much talk of nuclear war by the end of the year. And every time they talk about nuclear war, they talk about 
you know, even the issues of, um, you know, a possible EMP strike. But, you know, EMP shield is much more than just EMP. It's, it's also for, you know, power surges uh, that we get from electrical storms. And if you guys know, we have been having the craziest storms going on. I think California is under another crazy storm. That's going to get worse. These storms are going to get worse. Maybe that's something I should get over there on Patreon and update you guys on Patreon about. But anyway, when you're on there, though, just just as a reminder, I don't, I'm not, like I said, the vehicle is always, to me, the most important. But at this point now, I'm thinking that the house one is what's really important. Uh, let me just switch over to the house one instead there uh, for the home protection because your home is at risk. I've got one. I keep saying I got to get it installed. I started, started to do it, do it here recently, but I just don't know enough about it. So I really need to have an electrician do that for me. But when you go to add that to your cart, the important thing is your coupon code. They have what they call a coupon code. You want to do INL50 for Israeli News Live and then 50. You apply that, they're going to give you a $50 discount. And then plus the company itself will also uh, contribute a little bit to Israeli News Live in support of us sharing that with you. So it's another way to support this ministry as well, if that's the way God lays it on your heart. Uh, so, you know, we appreciate it. And I, I would not promote something if I did not believe in it. I, that's another thing I will tell you. If I didn't believe in it, I would not say it. So I'm just not like that. I'm not a salesman, and that's why I don't talk about it a lot. But, you know, when I see things going on, that's when I feel like I need to remind you. And normally I like to do it only around sales when I see them doing sales because then you save even more. But I don't see any sales going on right now, so I don't know when they'll have another sale. Uh, and right now at this point, I think it's just a good idea to get it and get it installed. God bless you. Thank you for listening. We love you, and have a great day.